In this video, we're going to look at how we can use the new Merge to HDR feature inside of Lightroom 6 to make a realistic looking interior HDR shot. I've got here a bracket of images that I shot. They are raw files, but there's still too much dynamic range for me to display in a single shot. It is possible that I might be able to coax out enough detail, especially out of the shadows, to make this work, but if I do so, the highlights will probably still be clipped and the shadows will probably be quite noisy. So instead, I'm going to create an HDR image. So in order to do this, I want to select the three images that I would like to work with. It could be more images if I'd like. And I want to make sure that uh, when I go to my develop module, that auto sync is set. And that way, when I make the changes to one image, I will also make the changes automatically to all the others. The first thing I'm going to want to do is to set the white balance. Right now things are looking too warm, so I'm gonna set this to about 3000. I found in advance that that is about the right temperature, and I like a tint of about plus 14. Mm, maybe plus 13. All right, I want all of these controls to be down at zero. I'm gonna come down to my lens correction. I wanna enable profile correction. That's gonna take care of any uh, distortion that's built right into that lens. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration, which is color fringing on high contrast areas, but typically toward the, the corners of the frame. And I'm going to choose the upright mode here. In this case, I'm going to choose auto, and it's going to make sure that the vertical stay vertical, which is a big, you know, important thing you want to do when you're um, doing uh, interior photography. Great. This is pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to go back to my library panel. I'm here inside of the grid. I've got my three images selected. I'm going to go to Photo, Photo Merge, HDR. Now, just pointing out here, that's Control-H on the Mac and the PC. Typically, you would find Command-H on a Mac if it was Control-H on the PC, but this is one of those rare instances where the keyboard shortcut is identical on the Mac and the PC. Now, as this loads up, I want to go over the options right here. There's auto align, and that's usually a good idea to do. I shot these on a tripod, so uh, it's not as important, but sometimes the uh, camera gets jostled a little bit while you're shooting, so it's, it's never a bad idea to have that turned on. Auto tone is Lightroom going to take a stab at toning the image for you, which you could do. Uh, in this case, I want to go through how I would develop the image, and I'm not really wild about the way this is came, coming out. It's not terrible or anything. Then there is the de-ghost amount, and uh, if there's a lot of movement in your picture, then you would go higher. So if you've got clouds that are blowing in the wind or something like that, typically you'd want to use that. Uh, there's not too much going on. This screen was changing, and so if I go, maybe I'll go with low, and uh, it'll pick something to put there. If I was worried about this, this might create a lot of noise in the area where it's de-ghosting. So I might just opt to use none, and then I could actually use Photoshop to composite uh, new content onto that screen. And then I'm just going to choose the Merge button here, and it's going to create a new DNG file. Now, finding the DNG file that's HDR can be a little bit difficult from finding your regular ones, specifically if you didn't apply the auto-toning. So uh, by default, if I select this as that new HDR image, uh, it, you'll notice it has a dash HDR in the actual name of the image. And since it's got that, then I can do a, a text search for dash, dash HDR and it'll come up with the high dynamic range DNG files. If anyone from Adobe is watching this and listening, it would be fantastic if the metadata search allowed a parameter for searching by bit depth, because then you could just use you know 32 bits per channel and that would find your HDR images. But in any case, here is our DNG file. So it's a raw file, but it's HDR. I'm going to open it. I'm going to go into the develop module to my basic panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tra drag down the highlights slider and recover all the highlight detail I can. I'm going to push the shadows up a bit, but I don't want to go too high. When I've got dark carpet like this, if I push it too high, it starts to just make it look like, you know, it's been through the washing machine a few minutes too, too a few too many times, I beg your pardon. And then I'm gonna go and move the exposure just a bit, about like that. I could increase the contrast a bit and then I might bring up my shadows just a hair. And then I'm gonna do this uh, trick here. This is a way of dodging and burning that uh, Serge Romelli over at Photo Surge uh, does a fair bit and it's a, 
I'll uh, I'll share a little link to his uh, his YouTube page here. Um, actually, I'm gonna move my overall exposure down just a bit to compensate for this. So now I've got the radio filter. I'm going to choose uh, a plus one. That's a good starting place. And I want to make sure my invert mask checkbox is on and my feather is all the way up. And I'm just going to paint little blotches of light into my image. I might eh, gotta get rid of that. Maybe there. There, one to kind of open up that shadow there, and uh, maybe back here. There we are. And uh, one last change, I want to actually just sort of um, lessen this right here. If I had had my wits about me, possibly I'd have shot this with a polarizing filter to reduce some of that glare, but I didn't. So let's fix that in post. I'm just going to dial this back. Doesn't really matter where I set it. And I, I set it to the negative though, and I'm just gonna paint that in and just sort of tame that glare on that shiny part of the flooring there. There we go. And uh, I might wanna crop this, so I'm gonna grab my cropping tool, um, make sure it's unlocked, and I might just bring this down a bit to make that a little bit more panoramic. And that is how I would go about making the realistic interior HDR image inside of Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC 2015.